Okay. Good morning, or better, yeah. good afternoon, good evening, good night. Good in uh, this uh, webinar <clears throat> that uh, um, is addressed to something of different about the the, the usual uh, the usual indications for uh, the use of the CTU Mega Twenty machine. Um, of the, the main treatments of the musculoskeletal disorders. Um, as uh, something of you know, knows, we are interested in uh, other in application of the high magnetic fields of the machine. And uh, uh, we, uh, we started with, uh, with a, a different uh, indications. Um, mainly concerning the, the contingencies of health uh, in uh, this period related to the COVID situation. And uh, we started uh, um, a pathway of research and the clinical applications of the machines in uh, muscular problems related to uh, the COVID disease, but also one of the, uh, the consequences or the sequelae of, uh, of the disease that is the pulmonary fibrosis or lung fibrosis. Uh, in this webinar, uh, we share uh, our knowledge uh, with the users of the machines because uh, uh, it's important for us uh, to have new ideas about the possibility to use two uh, mega twenty machines, the conventional, the conventional way of uh, use of the machine. So um, I'll explain in uh, this uh, this uh, webinar uh, the main aspect of the. Um, of the magnetic fields delivered by the machines. And then Dr. Felipe Torres from Cell Regeneration Medical Organization in Bogota, Colombia expert in neurological problems and in treatment with uh, mesenchymal stem cells. We will explain uh, something about uh, uh, the neuroinflammation and the chronic low-grade inflammation that is one of the the causes uh, of uh, the uh, disease, uh, uh, the COVID disease, but also in is a consequence uh, or the cause uh, of uh, uh, chronic uh, osteoarticular and other kind of metabolic disease. So you can imagine that uh, we have the possibility to treat uh, with our machine uh, other situations, other clinical situations that can give uh, a great uh, um, support for the patients and for uh, the treatment of disease that uh, at the moment are, are, have not uh, um, <clears throat> a specific therapy. Uh, this due, as you know, uh, from the possibility to biostimulation of the tissue with the, uh, the magnetic fields of our machine. And then Gentian Kuko, that is specialist in physical medicine rehabilitation, that uh, will describe the experience of the treatment in post-COVID patients uh, with rehabilitation and uh, with the machine. Um, about uh, the diamagnetism, that is the basis of, uh, of our um, mode or way of work with this machine, we have to consider that electromagnetism is something this, um, that is um, that interests all the matters because uh, our planet is a great uh, uh, electromagnetic coil. And so all uh, the biological and non-biological matters in uh, the universe, in our planet, um, are something of uh, electric and magnetic. So all the matters, all the human beings are electromagnetic. 
think that this history uh, of electromagnetism uh, teach us that uh, electromagnetism means uh, movement because the discovery of Faraday that uh, um, applied a magnetic fields to electric fields observed a movement and uh, in, uh, in the same period, another scientist, uh, Dr. L uh, Lenz, discovered that the direction of this induced electric current is uh, in opposite uh, uh, situation respect to uh, originary magnetic flow. So is the first demonstration of the, the magnetism and then we have now the knowledge that uh, all the matter is uh, mainly done in the some materials are more or less from the combination of the tens uh, electromagnetism with the ferromagnetism, so uh, with the attractive effect, but the, mat the matter rather than ferromagnetic is then magnetic. So when exposed to a, a magnetic fields uh, exerts this repulsive original one. In 1997, uh, we have the first evidence that the magnetism is uh, applied to the biology, and this the famous experiment of the flow demonstrate that uh, a high intensity of the magnetic generate better than the all uh, the uh, clinical application, all the success uh, in a clinical practice from these machines, they derive also from this uh, high intensity of the magnetic fields that better interact at the first with the water. It is the great part uh, of uh, the matter, as uh, uh, you uh, see from the experiment of the frog. But Ions, grand part, the great part of ions are diamagnetic, a great part of uh, uh, proteins are diamagnetic, so it means that all, all uh, the, the metabolism or the biological process of the cells are uh, related to a diamagnetic phenomenon that we can modulate with uh, as we, <clears throat> with this machine, as I can explain you in the next, uh, in the next slides. At the first, we have uh, for uh, driving from this uh, uh, high intensity of the magnetic field, the possibility to move water, so to treat uh, uh, acute or chronic edema. We can realize molecular separation and we can modulate the movements, the normal movements of ions, proteins, and the molecules that normally uh, are related to the metabolic activities of the cells, but also gives the possibility to vehiculate drugs or molecules inside the extracellular matrix and in the cells. Uh, so uh, we have to imagine that uh, uh, this. Uh, the cells at the ultrastructural levels as the extracellular matrix and uh, the uh, cell membrane. So we can optimize the transmembrane movement so the ions and the molecules as you can see in the picture we can modulate the movement in effect of the drainage from the surrounding cellular matrix test. It means that we can uh, 
uh, regulate, consider that uh, with the, our machines, uh, we um, support the patients not with uh, a normal magnetotherapy, but it's a biophysical stimulation that is very different from the biological and the productive point of view. So uh, the main aspect uh, uh, secondary to the uh, mechanical effect uh, of the high-intensity magnetic field is the biological stimulation of the cells. In this way, we can have the cells that work in a different way, but uh, it's, uh, to the high intensity of the magnetic fields, to other properties of the machines that are the low frequency of the magnetic fields and the variability of, uh, of uh, uh, the magnetic fields. That means for uh, different laws of the physics, we can induce movement of electric and by migration of the magnetic changes in the electrical potential Pietro, of the cells. Pietro, you have a problem with the microphone because sometimes it's interrupted. We cannot hear you. It's an internet connection problem or a problem with the microphone? I think the microphone because uh, for me, now it's better. Yes. Okay. I'll try to, to stay more than uh, the, the notebook. Um, it's still the same. Same? Yes. Uh, I don't know what to do. But now it's better. Why? We don't know. Um, the thing to consider is the variability of the frequencies, electromagnetic fields that is delivered by the machines. It's very different from the static magnetic fields and for uh, the low intensity magnetic fields. We have the ability frequencies uh, allow us to interact better with the electric property of the cells. And we can uh, realize an endogenous and endogenous uh, stimulation of the tissues. And so, we have a greater metabolic effect and more effective biological effect in the machine. And you know that uh, this wide range of electromagnetic frequencies of the machines can uh, stimulate in a different way and selectively uh, the part of the, in the tools, mainly in uh, the musculoskeletal system, but also in uh, nerve fibers and in transmissions of the pain of the pathways of uh, the system and the brain. And uh, so uh, you can see uh, the difference uh, from a uh, low intensity electromagnetic field, high intensity uh, electromagnetic fields induced by the situ mega 20, and then the extreme variability of the frequencies uh, in the situ mega 20, and is the same uh, amplitude of the uh, frequencies that is for, uh, for the uh, low intensity in magnetic fields. We have uh, a great Tu per caso c'hai degli auricolari o qualcosa? Perché è molto molto difficile da sentire questo che dici. No, scusa, non, non sto anche uso gli auricolari. Provo, scusate. Mm. Can you hear me better, so? Si, yes. Um, about the possibility to move uh, the liquids uh, in the human body, we have uh, 
diatermia, it gives the possibility to use uh, an, an electric field uh, to uh, facilitate the drainage of the liquid inside uh, the body. Uh, uh, there is also regular effects of even uh, an electric field on the diatermia because the only diatermia can uh, give overflow of liquid inside the, the tissue and through the mechanical effect of the magnetic field, you can have the so-called effect that, uh, that uh, uh, from the vasodilation, from the overflow of the extracellular matrix, and you uh, have no damage in the cells due to the persistence of the of the liquid inside the, the magnetic inside the tissue. Uh, the other characteristics related to uh, the high intensity and the mechanical effect of the magnetic field is the possibility yeah. to Pietro, Pietro è ancora molto mol, mol, uh, molto male se ti puoi mettere il microfono davanti a te perché così ce l'hai sotto. Adesso proviamo, dai vai avanti. Veramente male la connessione. Uh, ok. Uh, different distribution of the drugs inside the body respect to uh, uh, iontophoresis uh, when uh, it's uh, only electric currents but with magnetic fields, you have a different distribution of the molecules inside the more homogeneous concentrated in the, in the higher deep of the, the tissue. Uh, we have with these machines uh, a safety due to the low intensity of the magnetic, or the low frequency of the magnetic fields, wide wavelength, and the limits of the gradients uh, of the magnetic fields that uh, gives the great safety for the patients. This is very important because uh, we have, uh, from the biological point of view, an effect of the magnetic because uh, consider not only the high intensity of the magnetic field, but uh, also the possibility to modulate uh, uh, this magnetic fields with a variability of uh, frequencies, uh, the different amplitude, that, uh, the low gradient of the magnetic fields that give the possibility to, uh, to reach better biological SF effect on the cell and also on the human body. And uh, this is a, a presentation of some papers that we published about uh, the possibility to employ these machines not only in muscular disorders, fibrosis, uh, from red disease or in post-COVID, in the department of uh, the simulation of the uh, brain in, in, human, in humans. So, um, thank you for your attention. I apologize for the technical problems. I am scared uh, to start with the presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon here in Colombia. We are very, very early, but happy. Uh, to be in this webinar. Uh, my presentation is a basis of our inflammation disease and rare disease and autoimmune disease. Really, it's very important for understand the functionality to set the omega-20 in the control to inflammatory and regeneration tissue. It's very, very important. Okay. Um, perfect. And the... Um, Okay, the pulmonary fibrosis in rare disease and inflammatory disease in pathology post-COVID is very important. It's the same etiologist, is the, the only difference is that really the interleukin is very high 
regulation. The up regulation is, is very, very high incrementing. And the problem is no uh, return to the normality functionality. And the, really, uh, the problem is fibrosis in different tissue. Normally today is more important uh, understand the fibrosis in, in lung. Uh, really the other tissue is very important. Okay. Is the first is understand the unbalance to signals molecules spray crucial role in inflammatory, allergical, and autoimmune disease. Is alterate concentration stimulate the chronic disease and acute disease really is the very, very high problem. Normally, the, the physiological concentration is the picogram for, for milliliters or femtogram for milliliters. In hyper concentration or hypo concentration is starter disease. It's very important, is balanced to the, uh, understand the, 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 the disease. The immune system is controlled basis to a TH1 and TH2. The balance is for a really continuous interleukins in the good control. Example, the TH1 is 15 uh, coins and TH2 is 15 coins. In the moment to implementing, for example, a bacterial or virus disease is incrementing TH2, uh, the uh, 15, uh, 50 uh, coins to uh, uh, 70 coins. And the control is TH2 for no uh, in unbalance to the problems uh, in this in disease. Except to upregulation regulation to TH2 is in Crohn's disease or psoriasis. And normally TH2 is the little control to them for the normality and homeostatic uh, balance. And the opt, the TH2 up regulation is asthma for R2P. In wherever is normally the disbalance is a start to disease. In inflammation is very important, the, the, the inflammatory cytokines. Normally is interleukin one, interleukin six, interleukin eight, and TNF alpha. It's very, very important and you uh, is no to the interleukin 6 is more important in post COVID for the incrementing chronic. And the problem is a start to fibrosis in the tissue. It's important to intoxication wherever a disease is a specific level. In level one, inflammation and hyper response, and intoxication for level two is reduction in functionality and hypertrophy and hyperplasia. And level three is alteration in the structure and loss of function, of function the, the, the tissue. Normally in post-COVID is level two and level three is continuous and more, more incremented in the time. And in its moment observation, the three and six months after the post-COVID is incrementing to fibrosis in lung. Example for understand the TH2 is hyperactivation in uh, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, diabetes type 1, uh, tuberculosis, uh, pathologies autoimmune endocrine, and the TH2 is more hyperactivates in allergy, asthma, atopic dermatitis, sclerodermia is very important for these different points. Is the problem normally in the control to TH2, the incremental upregulation, the TH1, is incrementing interleukins to stimulate fibrosis the lung. Okay. Other examples, psoriasis, crown, alopecia, vitiligo. Okay, this is normally the chronic inflammation chronobiology. In the start, in the moment, wherever point the traumatic start infection virus or bacteria is incrementing interleukin one in uh, immediately limiting is tnf alpha is up regulation and after to 24 hours they start the incrementing uh, to for up regulation to interleukin six in its moment is degeneration Normally, in its point in the 
48 hours after for start the, the, um, the disease is incrementing interleukin 10 and THV beta. It's important for the problem in fibrosis is TGF beta. Really, in the problem is the interleukin. You see no down regulation, no homostatic regulation. It's incrementing chronic in the, in the chronic disease. It really the, the, the problem is low grade chronic inflammation. Normally, is the etiologist to chronic disease is the example to lupus on a multiple sclerosis or arthritis, uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is very problem. And the more and more problem really interleukins is interleukin one and interleukin six is really the start inflammation in the patients. And the interleukin 17 is the North Pole start to autoimmune disease is incrementing auto uh, um, auto bodies for a specific tissue and a start to autoimmune disease. This is the normal, this is physiological normally inflammation, incrementing interleukin-6 and in, in, in the moment, a start to incrementing interleukin-10 and interleukin-10 down regulation to interleukin-6 for same normality uh, regulation and homeostatic interleukin TH1. Normally, interleukin-1 is secreted for macrophages, monocytes, dendritic cells, fibroblasts, and endothelial cells. It really the uh, support to inflammatory process. Normally, activates cyclooxygenase type, type 2, or COX-2, prostaglandin A2, prostaglandin D2, and nitric oxide. It's very important. All mechanisms for inflammation, no? Normally, the control is NSAIDs for COX-2, cortisones for PGA-2, and uh, a salicylates for nitric oxido. It's normally block, traditional. For where is the utilization? Example, the biological drugs. is normal block the receptor or block the stimulation for the for the uh, inflammatory example the canalicumab or an or rinolacep is blocked to union the interleukin one for receptor to interleukin one is very very important in not in, in other example anakindra is block the possibility union the others interleukins in the receptor to a uh, cell uh, lymphocytes or, or, or macrophages is very important in the chronic low grade inflammation is the more important is interleukin 6 now you know in its moment in covid is the more important interleukin in the storm interleukins in the moment after to 8 or 10 days to after start the covid this is the real problem interleukin 10 is no incrementing down and interleukin 6 continues the of regulation and the problem is alteration to the uh, proteoglycans or uh, the, the extracellular matrix and incrementing the inflammatory disease. In autoimmune disease, I uh, uh, see I, and the important interleukin 10, TNF alpha, and normally the only interleukin control to, interle to uh, autoimmune disease in the TH. 17 is interleukin-4, is the only interleukin to control. Other interleukin is plus, is stimulate to TH17, interleukin-6, interleukin-21, and looking, interleukin-23. It's important, uh, I'm sorry, it's important the control interleukin-6 in the wherever moment to after to start really the incrementing the inflammatory disease. Normally, here in this point, in the incrementing interleukin 10, a start to increment in upregulation THB beta. THF beta is very important. In the first point, is modulation immune cells. It normally, is incrementing with the interleukin 10. After activation for fibroblasts, it's important to regenerate T 
tissue to uh, the mesh for disease. And after is really the problem. After is incrementing the, the, the matrix collagen deposition and is in the moment, the fibrosis in the tissue is really, really problem. Normally is uh, anti-inflammatory cytokines is very good normally for the, in, the storm, the, the, post, the COVID is very high in interleukin six is the interleukin 10 is, is the same, is high for, for necessity to a control to interleukin six is really, really problem. In this moment, THF beta is up regulation and the down interleukin six, interleukin 10 block and THF beta is continuous and the position is collagen incrementing and start to the fibrosis. A change example interleukin 10 is incrementing a stimulate for stat three, the gene expression for claudine four and down regulation to claudine two. More stimulation for time injection stabilization in wherever mucos plonk and, um, and bowel or the other tissue. And this GF beta is the same. Stimulate R E R K and SMAT2 in the nucleus and gene expression up regulation to claudine one and stabilization to the injection. This is normal. This is the physiological normality. The problem normality in example in bowel in cope or in, in a chronic disease in the lung, stimulate interleukin-6 plus plus in the chronic TGF beta and stimulate TH17. First, stimulate a start to the autoimmune disease. And second is fibrosis, is, plurish, is decoped, is chronic inflammation in the lung. It's the same situation to the COVID. Example, in the smoke, more stimulation to HBF beta as uh, very, very problem. No only is the COVID, wherever chronic inflammation, altered joint homeostasis is a reduction in the quality of life, more pain, joint destruction, joint instability, instability and, and muscle weight, and muscle atrophy is example. Is the same problem inflammatory in rheumatoid arthritis. Example is important interleukin-1, interleukin-6, TNF up regulation, interleukin-17 start and stimulate fibroblast inflammation and really degradation to matrix and bone destruction. Inflammation, bone destruction and matrix degradation. It really the more problem is the matrix for the chronic disease. Normally is the problem, matrix degradation, inflammation and bone destruction. Normally the control is interleukin-4 and interleukin-10. In the COVID is block interleukin-10 in the after to post-COVID, no in the moment the, 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 the acute disease is very problem. Uh, is really understand is not only the interleukin is the, is the regulation. Really the transcriptoma analysis is re, the brain response in signature is very important. Other points, sleep deprivation, psychostimulants, antidepressives is very important to union, more incrementing interleukin-6, interleukin-17, or no activity to TGF beta. Is C observation is example in the personal, uh, the, the, the patients is more possibility to hospitalize or very severe respiratory normally in example in different uh, disease. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, example in alteration to the, the sleep alteration is more incrementing to hospitalize in patient with COVID. Uh, is more control in example in lupus. I uh, really, the, the, the control is more continuous uh, using to corticoids. Uh, is very, very interesting. No for a specific, the, the lupus is the using the corticoids. No really very, very severe respiratory for COVID in its patients. 
Okay, it's important. Interferon and interleukin-6 is blocked interleukin-10. Really, in the fibrosis, is good. In these in this cases, it's re really difficult for better result in the, in the tratament in the, in the disease. The plasticity, the extracellular metrics, is really fundamental to understand the fibrosis and the control to inflammatory uh, tissue. And normally, is metalloproteinases, is 22 human proteolytic enzymes, is a control to the tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases. It's only four inhibitors of proteins. Is the control one to one? Yes, is perfect to the control of the fibrosis. Is the metalloproteinases is degradation to extracellular matrix proteins, and the only control is the the inhibitors proteins is the stimulate the synthesis synthesis the matrix extracellular matrix. It's important for the same balance to TH1 and TH2. Is more incremented TH2 is more stabilization to extracellular matrix. More incremented TH1 is more metalloproteinases degradation the extracellular matrix. Is the degradation in the looking one, the looking six, and the position the position to the extracellular matrix is TGF beta is more important. The more important extracellular matrix protein is collagenous. Is very the, the important for understand really mechanotransduction stimulate and the media magnetic fields is a stimulation. How really normality to the collagens is equilibrium in wherever stretch or relaxation to the extracellular matrix with the diamagnetic field a stimulation to synthesis the collagenase. In, the, in, in a specific moment, a stimulation to extracellular matrix to diamagnetic field is up regulation to the um, uh, growth factors. In the moment, the growth factors, the stimulation, they rechange the proteoglycans and the collagens autologous the, the, the same patient. Is in understand the extracellular matrix is turned over physiological is the first in the soul phase and the gel phase is the different normally in the inflammatory is gel is, is soul phase is activity protease is hydrolysis of matrix the proteins and the other points is the alkalosis is anti proteases activity resynthesis of matrix proteins is very important it is physiologic normally it is the plasticity of extracellular matrix in the moment incremental upregulation regulation to interleukin pro inflammatory is is the different and change to modification in extracellular matrix more rows more cytokines pro-inflammatory, different pH. In the acute inflammatory, is continue the soul phase. In the persistent acute inflammatory to interleukin-1 and interleukin-6, is low-grade inflammatory disease. And after, is continuous TGF beta, is the stimulate the fibrosis. The wherever tissue is very important to the control. Normally, the problem is extracellular matrix rigidity to the position. The collagen type three is really the problem. Normally, is the uh, collagen type one to normally control. Is the normally physiological uh, uh, inflammation is first acidosis and after the control the alkalosis to resynthesis the proteins in the matrix. The problem is continuous. The interleukin six and is pathological inflammation and really the no pro no control to re stimulation the extracellular matrix it's important recovery the balance in wherever uh, inflammatory disease or autoimmune disease or uh, subacute disease um, is very understand the with is the comparison the chronic disease in autoimmune disease with the covid after to stage two in 2B in COVID, the incrementing interleukin seed is chronic. No in the storm is chronic. The interleukin 10 is blocked and TGF 
beta is incrementing and rigid to the uh, matrix. Normally, the control is you know the control in its moment, hydroxychloroquine, uh, tocilizumab, uh, and uh, retrovirals, uh, retrovirals drugs is continuous for down regulation to inflammatory possibilities. And really the problem, no is important, only the patient to post COVID to hide the storm, the interleukins in little symptoms is the same, continuous interleukin-6 chronic inflammation. And it really is the very problem in patients, really no severity respiratory uh, uh, affectation in the, in, in the moment the COVID for after the three or six months, start to sequelarity symptoms. In normally, and the post-COVID, you see really interleukin-6 no return to the normality. Now, it's important that wherever tissue to affect it to ACE2 for its possibility, a stimulation diamagnetic fields and return and the down inflammatory regularity inter interleukin-6 and down THF beta for the possibility growth factor, regenerative tissue and better um, response. Really, the CT omega-20 is very good for possibility using in different uh, disease. Post-COVID is very, very important. Um, thank you for all attention. In, uh, in Espanol, is gracias for your attention. Bye. Okay, thank you, Felipe, for your presentation. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, I would like to underline something about your presentation uh, because it's very important uh, that uh, the, the main message, the very important message of your presentation is that uh, we have not only the consequences of uh, COVID disease but we have in our actuality a series of chronic diseases that are as common as chronic inflammation. With this machine, uh, since the machine uh, in better way than other forms of electromagnetic fields regulate the activity of the cells, and uh, we have to consider that a great part of disease uh, are related to uh, this imbalance of, uh, of the cells, uh, the incapacity to work in, uh, in the right way, and uh, is, uh, uh, all is a property of the uh, biophysical stimulation as uh, um, of course, uh, in the interactions with the cell wall, with the membrane of the cell, uh, we changing the electrical, electrical potential of the cells, we can remodulate the metabolic activity of the cells and of the extracellular matrix. And so, as you explained, uh, with this machine, we can work on the extracellular matrix and if we can work on the cells and send, uh, remodulate the activity of the cells and uh, remodulate also the inflammation because uh, uh, COVID, but uh, other disease, other metabolic disease are uh, uh, consequences of a metabolic dysregulation a chronic inflammation. Uh, so I think that with this machine, we have the possibility uh, to, uh, to treat uh, also other uh, pathologies that uh, actually uh, they are treated only with drugs, uh, but not with uh, a biophysical stimuli uh, that is more physiological in uh, uh, modulating the, the, real, the real effects and the real activity of the cells. Um, I'll, I'd like to thank the audience for the attention. Um, okay.
I'm going to share with you a part of my, my experience um, in the rehabilitation process in COVID patients and try to explain the importance of uh, biophysical stimulation of respiratory muscles. Of course, with a low frequency and high intensity pulsed electromagnetic fields. Um, unfortunately, we uh, are still living in the COVID uh, pandemic and we know how infection uh, disease it is. And we also know that it's a systemic disease and causes a multi-organ damage. Uh, if um, just for introduction, rehabilitation is a set of interventions designed to reduce disability in health conditions. And of course, uh, being now in this uh, uh, last years has been a very active part of uh, treatment, um, in, of course, in this pandemic. As many other health conditions, rehabilitation has to begin as soon as possible with all the rehabilitation professionals needed, like physiotherapists, ther uh, occupational therapists, uh, psychologists, um, physical um, doctors. And uh, we promote self-care and education, not only to the patient, but also to the family and caregivers during the hospital in stay and after uh, patient discharge. In our experience, in my experience, in our hospital, the first evaluation is done during the intensive care stay and a personalized rehabilitation plan is designed according to scientific, scientific uh, society's protocols. In intensive care unite, we usually find very deconditioned patients. All these systemic inflammation that we talked uh, and explained very well, uh, Pietro and Felipe, uh, organ failure, immobilization, and other factors added, such as different drugs administrated, uh, causes muscle wasting and the so-called uh, ICU or intensive care unite at carried weakness. And this is a very um, disability um, that we find in, in this patient and in COVID patient um, more than, than, than other years. Uh, I think... Um, this may be the most, uh, the most important part to understand the muscle dysfunction. Uh, as Wasserman explained, um, the coupling of external ventilation and cellular metabolism, uh, we can say that the real breath happens at cellular level in the mitochondria. That's why the importance of uh, um, by, uh, the stimulation at cellular level, as Pietro says uh, before. We have an alteration of the strength and resistance in skeletal and respiratory, respiratory muscles. And the clinical manifestation that we see are weakness and fatigue. A rehabilitation assessment is continuing then during hospital, hospitalization and after discharge. Functional capacity evaluation, uh, activity of, day, uh, of daily living, uh, living a home and work assessment is planned according to the new rehabilitation goals, um, first in uh, hospitalization, um, uh, during hospitalization, and then at home. Well, we we continue we continue with the healthcare because uh, the hospital stay can vary from a few weeks to months, and of course um, some kind of disability. Um, last um, after discharge so it's our uh, everyday challenge to reduce it or to minimize it mm, in this paper i bring this paper uh, because mm, now we can talk about the long-term effects of the covid um, infection disease and in this paper authors and shows that almost 19% of the subjects suffered su uh, symptoms after COVID recovery. So um, when we talk about recovery, can we really talk about the recovery? Are these patients, are our patients recovered or totally recovered? Mm, or we have to talk about uh, um, what kind of sequela the virus is, is leaving. And we talk about pulmonary fibrosis, but not only. Um, there are a lot of papers and different authors talks about uh, pulmonary sequelae like fibrosis, but 
also uh, persistent neurologic and cardiovascular manifestation as uh, muscular uh, dysfunction too. So my answer is how can we try to avoid it, not only treat uh, all these sequelae. I bring a paper uh, to analyze the possibility of a BS stimulation in post-COVID uh, pneumonia patients with the CTU megavente. In this paper, uh, 10 patients with respiratory failure related to COVID interstitial in, um, pneumonia were selected and addressed to daily treatment for respiratory rehabilitation. This according to, um, to the guidelines of Italian Association of Hospital Pneumologists and the Respiratory Insufficiency uh, Rehabilitation Association. Um, additionally, of the, the classic rehabilitation, we can say, with um, respiratory uh, uh, training or global uh, muscle or skeletal muscle reinforcement uh, was uh, added or underwent the treatment with um, low frequency, high intensity um, electromagnetic fields with the CTU megavente. It was used the protocol uh, mod a modified protocol that already um, was used in uh, in, in in other fibrosis um, um, disease, and it was uh, the protocol. Well, it, it, they underwent uh, three times a week a treatment for two weeks, for a total of six uh, of, of six sessions of twenty minute duration. Uh, the treatment area included the posterior and posterior lateral thoracic uh, region for intercostal muscles and serratus anterior muscle. Mm, we, but we have to, um, the, the, um, the, it is known that the, the machine um, can uh, penetrate uh, or extend the, the treatment um, beneath seven centimeters. Uh, um, of of uh, of the depth, so we we thought other muscles or or are, are were treated. In uh, in the conclusion, as we can see, um, a lot of uh, scales and functional uh, tests were assessed uh, before and this, and and after treatment, and all the the parameters were um, improved. As we can see in the six uh, minute walking test, in Tinetti scale, in Borg uh, scale, in Bartel index, in short um, uh, short uh, test, and MRC, and the saturation. The saturation improved in all the, these patients. So, what can we conclude? That the treatment with uh, CTU megavente is well tolerated treatment, and um, this patient improved. Or, speedy and, and progressive in dyspnea and, and all the, the fatigue that they, they associate and of course uh, in the functional test. There were no different changes in x-rays and CT scan but the time to see changes in CT and uh, x-ray was um, was little time. There was not so so um, there was not a uh, um, sufficient time to, to see these changes. Thank you for the attention. So what's can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me, Pietro? Yes. That's I have okay. problems with the connection, but I don't I don't know if I can I can hear you you're now. Uh, Jenkins. Yes, yes, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jensen, for your presentation. And um, now I'm asking something, yeah. some question about the, the presentations and uh, mainly on this possibility to treat uh, um, different conditions with, uh, with our machine. And um, Gentian Kuko explained 
the importance uh, also to support the activity of uh, the muscles, uh, not only respiratory muscles, but uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the, the limb of uh, muscle, for example, because uh, it's important in uh, this kind of patients uh, to support the, the normal muscular activity because they are related with the mortality in negative case um, about the consequences uh, of uh, COVID disease. And um, we open the possibility that the users of the machine uh, would be interested uh, in this kind of a treatment because uh, it's effective for the patients, not only for the uh, muscular aspect, but uh, for the general aspect of the respiratory and then the cardiorespiratory uh, functioning of um, in these patients. Okay, we have some uh, questions. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, do you treat only the latissimus dorsi or other muscles? Um, the, we choose to, to treat the, the latissimus dorsi because it's large muscles and uh, it's uh, easy as, pro, uh, as approaching these patients, um, mainly in patients that uh, come from intensive care. And, uh, but I would like to, uh, to include the gentian in this uh, question as a uh, specialist in rehabilitations. What is your idea about the, the treatment of the, the respiratory muscles and if selectively to treat better one group rather than the yeah. other? Thank you, thank you, Pietro. Uh, in in the part of of, of the Wasserman diagram, I I, I brought it because um, in this pa in this patient we see that the the um, muscle dysfunction is general muscle dysfunction, skeletal muscle dysfunction associated with a neuropathic um, dysfunction and respiratory respiratory muscle dysfunction. So. Um, sincerely, with this machine, if we can stimulate uh, all the muscles or, or big muscles, preferably, I think I think mm, we are we are doing it well uh, because um, the the changes or the, the dysfunction is uh, exist at uh, the the cellular uh, level. So it is important to stimulate the, the muscle, not only uh, the exercise, what we do every day in rehabilitation. But I think it's it's important to as if we can, it's just to give some 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 more stimuli to the muscle to to to, to recover. So th this was uh, uh, um, a paper with with few patients, but um, in the in the future I think we we can we can report uh, other other cases of of treatment in in other muscles and not only in the, in the respiratory muscles. And the limb, I think, is very important. We see it in the chronic obstructive, uh, obstructive uh, uh, pulmonary disease that um, changes is, is like a pronostic. The, 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 um, the strength of the limb is it's, it's a pronostic uh, index in this patient. Yes, the key message is um, is that we, we may treat uh, mainly the respiratory muscles, but also the other muscles because it's a global benefit. Um, yes. we, uh, we may not stay only on the respiratory muscles. Yes, it's important to treat uh, this group of muscles, but we have to consider uh, the general aspect of disease, uh, Felipe Torres explained of the receptors for the virus that are ubiquitous in the, in the body. It is the, the reason because the disease is a disease of the brain, of the nerves, of the heart, of the kidney, of the liver, of the lung, and the muscles. 
is a global and a complex pathology. Uh, we focused on the, uh, the most important part that is the lung, the pneumonia. But uh, when we consider the sequelae, I visited many patients with muscular pain two or three months uh, from uh, the, the disease. And uh, I see situation of arthrocyanovitis of an unclear origin. So liquid effusion in the joints. Uh, pathology uh, similar um, to rheumatoid arthritis, but are not rheumatoid arthritis. In my experience, I never saw these patients before COVID. Uh, but you have to, um, to consider this, that the virus opened many doors in our tissue, in our bodies. And maybe we have uh, uh, doors that are more uh, reactive, and so you have the pathology in the in the in the organ on the tissue, but is uh, a general disease. And we think that modulating uh, with the our machines the inflammation at the peripheral level, we can support all the function the functionality of uh, of the body. Uh, I would ask to, to call Felipe about your experience in uh, neurological applications, uh, also in post-COVID uh, disease. Okay, thank you, Pietro. I, I think first uh, two points. It's important to understand really the uh, using the movement to the liquid intra and extracellular matrix is very, very important for the intracellular stimulate to um, upregulate to growth factors to regenerative tissue is very, very important. And the extracellular liquid is very important for down regulation to inflammatory. The old tissue is uh, down edema and down the really problem chronic in the patient is the very first point. The second is they understand the specific tissue fields and diamagnetic uh, therapy is very important. In the muscles is very important and the union neuromuscle union in this load fibrous nervous is very, very, very important. Not only the functionality muscle is the really the stimulate the parasympathetic stimulation to the functionality uh, in the long example. I have really good results in treatment in disease, neurological disease post COVID. Normally in Colombia, the, the post COVID is more head chest and confusion and really uh, the problem for the incrementing the, uh, in the patient to dementia and the um, uh, neuro, uh, neuropathic pain uh, is normally, and the anosmia no? is, is continuous. And the result is very interesting for the, in the first uh, uh, steps for treatment, in the first or second uh, session to treatment, the patient in the first session is a little incrementing to the uh, symptoms for one or two days. And after to control the second session and the three session and go and after is very good result. In return to the uh, regulation in anosmia, the head chest is down, is really normal. The second session is continuous. The confusion is very good. And uh, really, uh, to the control, the glia in the extracellular metrics in the in the in the in neurological system is little different. Not only uh, interleukin inflammatory in the in the tissue is more down regulation to the control neurotoxicity and the the mesh in the in the in the cell neuro, neurological cells uh, observation 
is controlled to neurofibrillars in the glia. Normally, it's the same control too in the Parkinson or uh, Alzheimer. is is very controlled. Uh, the good control, I think, really is for the experience in the normally using the CTU mega twenty in the. Mm, uh, neurodegenerative diseases, good control and good results in the post-COVID is the same in more short time to the, uh, the treatment. It's, it's very good control. Okay, thank you, Felipe. And some question? Can I ask, I ask uh, Felipe or Pietro? And do you think it's just the reflection, the, the right moment of, of the treatment, the right moment when we can apply the treatment, when you can, when we can, uh, um, do you think there's the right moment or as soon as possible? Because, you know, from, from rehabilitation point, uh, for, for us, the exercise or the movement, uh, all, it has to be as, as soon as possible. For um, yes, I agree. <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, having the possibility to modulate the machine, uh, we can treat easily the patients uh, in a subacute phase because uh, we have the advantage to modulate the therapy as we, we like, we want, we need. So it's different from other machines that you have uh, a restricted range. Well, of movement in the sense mm -hmm. of uh, what we can do. But uh, I think that the, the first thing is to, um, to block these, uh, these consequences that continues from the anatomopathological point of view. No? Also, if the patient uh, is uh, ameliorating from the dyspnea rather than um, the, the weakness of the muscles, but uh, in my experience in patients that suffered the COVID disease in March, uh, they are not uh, in good situation from the muscular point of view. Then I think that uh, what is typical of the low grade inflammation, chronic inflammation, that continues to produce damage. And uh, I think that uh, um, it's better to start with the treatment as soon as possible. Felipe, what do you think about this? Yes, I, I, I same your opinion, really. Is the, the possibility to control the uh, block to uh, incrementing outside the, the, the interleukins, pro-inflammatory, the in, uh, intercell to liquids is block is zero, no stimulation, and a stimulation to extracellular liquid for a down regulate down the edema in the zone and down the interleukin pro-inflammatory is possibility using in acute uh, disease is, is very interesting. For example, in the chronic, is all mm, opposite uh, treatment is uh, the extracellular um, liquid is down or blow, no using really no edema in this moment, and no is good re replace to the extracellular matrix in chronic inflammation. is only stimulate to a, secre a secretion to the growth factors. I, I think really you, it's the different to the other device is stimulate to increment in inflammatory for first time. So it's, it's stimulate, to choke, and the choke is a stimulate the incrementing inflammatory to regulate to the regeneration. In the in the CTU, no, is the same uh, treatment. Is the possibility control to the only regenerative uh, uh, in the tissue and the down the the inflammatory in the in the acute disease. Um, sorry, Felipe. I think that this question is for you. What are the findings? of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems for treatments? Normally using all uh, stimulate paravertebral in zone is for dermatoma or myotoma. Really is more stimulated is paravertebral in zone. Example, in patient to the, mm, 
to the ataxia cerebellosa is very good using stimulate for more uh, in sympathetic in cervical and lumbar and parasympathetic in dorsal is is very stimulate good to the um, to the uh, dermatoma or myotoma is very very in the, in myotoma really the stimulation to different systems in the parasympathetic and sympathetic and the possibility control in the slowed uh, nervous fibers and the faster nervous fibers is very important to stimulate parasympathetic and sympathetic uh, nervous. Thank you, Felipe. Uh, the other question, uh, I see that I said one treated ACL rupture. Um, you have to, I think that you consider uh, this uh, the question is from Troy Payne, um, related to the post-surgery treatment of uh, the anterior cruciate ligament. But uh, um, so I think that uh, so uh, you can treat in uh, post-surgery the patients uh, to reduce the edema, to, uh, to enforce the, um, the muscles uh, and uh, to rehabilitate the patients also from the proprioceptive point of view that is very important that is another things uh, that you can do with this machine playing with the slow or fast uh, nerve fibers and but it's also the kind of the stimulation uh, that is so complete that you uh, can stimulate uh, the ligaments uh, after surgery if you intend uh, the, the acute phase pre-surgery, you can prepare the patients to the surgery and uh, reducing the edema and the, the inflammation uh, post-trauma. And then, uh, um, about the natural polarity of the body is another question. It's very difficult <laughs> just to understand uh, what happened to the complete, uh, the complex relations uh, in, in, inside the body. But uh, I think that the main thing to consider that uh, um, we uh, normally are subjected to variations over our electrical states, but it is normally uh, because we have different uh, conditions, uh, also inflammatory in the, in the night rather than in the morning. And this uh, is a consequence of the uh, transmembrane flux of ions and the liquids in the extracellular matrix. And uh, each change of this condition can change the electric state of, uh, of the tissue. But I can say if uh, is, uh, this uh, change of polarity in the tissue uh, can involve uh, all the body in, uh, during the treatment. The other question is about the ICL without surgery, okay, uh, the, the answer is that you can treat the patients. And uh, also helping in the Achilles tendon, yes. Um, better than surgery, it depends from the lesions. If you intend uh, the chronic tendinopathy uh, that uh, some surgeon um, treat, uh, uh, before the rupture, I think that you can try with Achilles tendon, but depends of the entity and the site of the lesions, uh, because you have a, a great, uh, an, an extensive aspect, uh, degenerative aspect of the Achilles tendons. Uh, um, I think that you can try to to treat with the machine, but uh, we have to also to consider the cause of uh, this, uh, the problems in Achilles tendons is uh, related to trauma 
or overuse uh, of secondary to hormonal problems or to drugs. It's important to consider the etiology of, uh, of the Achilles tendinopathy. No other. Uh, then I would uh, conclude. Uh, at first, uh, I would uh, thank you for your participation and uh, also for your questions. Are uh, very interesting. It is uh, very interesting to to receive questions not only to animate uh, the, the discussion, but also because uh, everyone uh, has to teach something in the questions as in the answer. Uh, other question? Yes, yes, with the machine you can speed you can speed sincerely. You can speed the healing of the the bone fracture. Uh, it's, it's important to say I know orthopedistic for. It's important to say it's possibility using in uh, in the in the immobilization uh, uh, for up to immobilization. No, is specific in 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 contact to the, the skin, no? It's very, very important to the broke bones is... About the time, uh, you can uh, treat the patients in acute fractures. Um, I think that is better in the, the first days uh, because you can modulate the inflammatory response that is propedeutic to the healing of the fractures. But with this machine, uh, you can uh, treat the patients uh, um, long in the time. Uh, if, you, if you have some problem uh, like the delayed union of the fractures of pseudoarthrosis, uh, you, can, um, you can use the machine in, uh, in each time from the fractures. It depends uh, of the, the kind of fractures uh, for example, if you are a fracture of the wrist in the old man and old woman, uh, I think that uh, it's better for these patients to recover first and then to treat, uh, yet then you can treat in acute phase the fractures. In other kind of fractures like tibia, uh, you can wait uh, the normal process uh, of healing or also in the foot because uh, uh, you have uh, the possibility of uh, a normal healing in this bone. It depends from the fracture, but uh, about your question, you can treat uh, with a great possibility of success in, um, in the case of fractures. Um, about uh, the, the bolts and pins, uh, it depends from the materials normally uh, we can, uh, we now we have not um, osteosynthesis of the fractures with uh, uh, metallic material, but uh, uh, at not um, magnetic uh, materials that you can treat in the great part of the fracture post surgery. The most important things is that are not metallic and uh, not ferromagnetics. This, uh, um, uh, this uh, osteosynthesis. Yes, we have the radio frequency as uh, as a combination of the treatment to improve uh, uh, the the recovery in edema, acute or chronic edema, or also in uh, uh, lymphoedema. And we, uh, I explained uh, that uh, uh, there is a regulation of the magnetic fields on the radio frequency. 
So if the radio frequency support the effect, the mechanical effect of the uh, magnetic fields, the magnetic fields regulate the radio frequency just to avoid the overflow. Uh, that is a consequence of uh, the only radio frequency. Okay. I think then uh, we can we we can stop. Uh, thank you again. Uh, I would like to invite you. Uh, the users of the machine to share with us the uh, treatment of the chronic disease, uh, the chronic consequence in muscles uh, post-COVID, and we can support you uh, sharing the protocols and other things because uh, this is a great project of Periso and the Periso Academy uh, to uh, to exploit uh, the uh, use of the machine out uh, uh, not only for the musculoskeletal disorders intending the post-traumatic disorders but other important pathologies. Uh, we can send the papers, okay? And you can use, uh, you can modulate, uh, um, turn on uh, the radio frequency. Do you, do you mean to start with the radio frequency and then to treat with the magnetic field? Normally you use the radio frequency for a selected period of time and then set up the machine uh, with, other, uh, with other modalities. Yes, we can, we can use the, um, the pulse electromagnetic fields that is the great part of the treatment. This is more biological. Okay. Uh, Thomas, uh, we can stop. Yes, I think... Uh... No, uh, sorry, sorry. No. sorry, we have another question. <laughs> what is the average charge? Uh, what do you intend for charge? Ah, mm, I, 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 can, I can say it. <laughs> Cost to client, uh, Thomas. <laughs> mm. This depends uh, on the country and it's not topical. Yeah. It's not specific for our role. Okay. Okay. Thank you. To everybody, uh, greetings. I thank you Everyone. all to you, to the participants, Dr. Torres, Dr. Kuko, Dr. Romeo, and greetings from Switzerland all over the world. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, thank Pierre. You. Thank you. Thank you.